Okay. It's 12.01. I'm Steve Rosansky, President and CEO of the Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce. And I want to uh, welcome you to our first Inspire Women in Business uh, meeting of uh, 2021. We're going to kick off this year with uh, a great uh, program uh, delivered by Kim Tavares, who I'll introduce in just a second. Uh, the, this one's titled Women in the Workplace, and I believe we're going to talk about the effects COVID have had on women in the workplace and, and going forward, but obviously Kim will tell us a little bit more about that. Um, for those of you who are new to uh, the Chamber, uh, you know, we're the Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce. We have roughly 600 uh, individual uh, businesses that are members of our Chamber, very active. Uh, have a number of different program offerings that uh, we're presenting uh, through webinar these days, but hopefully uh, we're going to get some good news this afternoon from uh, the Orange County Department of Public Health, letting us know that we can open up even further. And so we're looking forward to inviting you in the next several months to some in-person meetings. Maybe our next Inspire meeting will be in person. Uh, we always have those in great restaurants around town and they're always very informative. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to find Kim's resume here, uh, which I have pulled up, a very short bio. Um, I, will, I will say, and Kim will reiterate as she's speaking, if uh, this is a webinar format, so uh, there will be a Q&A uh, portion at the end of the presentation. And if you do have any questions, please type them into the Q&A um, chat, or not the chat box, the Q&A box down below. And um, Marie Case, um, the co-host of, uh, of this program and the uh, co-presenter uh, will be asking uh, the questions later on. So you can certainly get all your questions answered uh, towards uh, the end of the program. So that being said, I'll launch it off with uh, Kim Tavares has more than 18 years of experience providing accounting and business advisory services. And Kim is a trusted advisor to entrepreneurs and established business owners in the health and nutrition, automotive, law and medical practices um, uh, areas. She works side by side with her clients to strengthen their financial position by reducing costs and better managing their working capital. Um, I'll also add that she's the um, uh, vice chair of the uh, Chamber Board of Directors and will be our chair of our board, uh, I believe, starting in June. So uh, she's also served as the uh, CFO for the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I know she works um, as a uh, off-site CFO for a number of different entities, uh, many of which are also chamber members. So with that being said, Kim, I'm going to turn it over to you and Marie, and uh, looking forward to a great program uh, about how uh, COVID has uh, affected uh, uh, women and the challenges and disruption in the workplace that, uh, that you're seeing that we could expect going forward. So take it away. Thank you, Steve. Good morning. Well, I guess I should say good afternoon, everyone. Super excited to be back uh, 2021 Inspire. It's been a while. Uh, for those of you that are new that don't have never heard of Inspire, just, you know, we launched it. Marie, myself, um, Kathleen Peters is on here. A group of us had launched it about almost four years ago as a way to really tap into women in business within Newport Beach. Uh, so we've had pre-COVID a uh, series of speakers that have come to speak for us. Um, we've done some roundtables, networking, social things. Um, so happy to have this platform up and running again. Um, so Women in the Workplace 2020. Uh, one night couldn't sleep three o'clock in the morning and came across this study. Uh, and I thought it was perfect uh, to kick off Inspire for this new year. And it was a report done by McKinsey and Company. Many of you probably, they're, they're a well-established consulting firm. And um, together with the Lean In organization, did this um, study on women in the work. They've done it for years. Um, I'm going to read a little bit about the study. Um, it's uh, So women in the workplace, it was the largest comprehensive study of the state of women in corporate America. Uh, they started this study in 2015, and the McKinsey and Company, and together with the Lean In organization, launched the study to help companies advance diversity in the workplace. So specifically, um, they were working with corporate America to figure out um, how they can best help women um, within, you know, working in working for these big corporations, corporate culture, um, things of that nature. 
So between 2015 and 2019, they, use, they really work with close to 600 uh, companies um, that actually took part in this study. Um, so now we're at a crossroad, a, a crossroad, as it says on the opening slide, that corporate America is at a cr critical crossroad because us as women in the workforce are being hit very hard um, due to COVID in a number of different ways. And so this year's report really goes and dives deep into how this has affected us, what companies can do. And the study is just, just it, it's amazing. And I did a high level of some of the things that it touched upon. Um, but the other thing that I should mention is I did reach out directly to the Lean In organization who was amazing. Um, they're the ones that provided the entire study for us. Um, so I'm just gonna summarize it here for you guys. So COVID-19 has disrupted the workplace in ways we've never seen before. Um, change the slide. Um, so COVID-19 crisis, many employees are struggling to do their jobs, right? Many feel like they're always on. And I think a lot of us can attest to that. You know, now that we're working from home, there really is no shutoff for us. Um, there's no boundaries between work and home. And, um, you know, add to the pressure of worrying about your family's health, finances. And so for women in the workplace, the burnout is real. Uh, women in particular have been negatively impacted. Women, especially women of color, are more likely to have been laid off or furloughed um, during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and then the state of, you know, the state of the pipeline. Between 2015 and 2020, we made slow but steady progress in women's representation. So we were actually making strides. We were breaking those glass ceilings. Um, but then a broken rung is what they call it. At the first step up to management continues to hold women back. And now COVID-19 comes across and it's threatening to erase the gain that we've made as women in business, um, that, that headway that we've made in the last six years. Uh, so we are at a critical crossroad and I think it's important for companies, it, it's important for companies to, to adjust their co corporate culture, but it's also, uh, it's, it's important to bring awareness to this. So, for every 100 men, uh, for every 100 men promoted to manager, only 85 women were promoted. Only 58 Black women and 71 Latinas were promoted. Women remained significantly outnumbered at the manager level at the beginning of 2020. So these are all pre-COVID numbers. They held just 38% of manager positions, while men held 62%. Um, so now we have this COVID-19 crisis impact. As many as 2 million women are considering taking a leave of absence or leaving the workforce altogether. The progress we've seen over the past six years has been erased. Um, you know, along with that, you know, the pandemic is a health and financial crisis that has turned people's lives and workplaces upside down. Many employees are exhausted and burnt out, like I said. Women in particular have been negatively impacted and three groups are facing distinct challenges. And those are mothers, senior level women and black women. Uh, so, you know, within the study, they, they were talking to all these employees of these companies that they use in the study. And um, this kind of highlights what employees were saying were their biggest challenges during COVID-19. Number one was anxiety over layoffs or furloughs. Number two was burnout. Number three was mental health. Four was childcare, which I'm surprised that childcare isn't higher up on that. Five is physical and mental health of loved ones. And six was financial uh, insecurity. Oops. Um, certain challenges are more likely to push women out of the workforce. So, you know, we're all home with our children or um, so there's lack of, lack of flexibility at work, feeling like they needed to be available to work all hours, feeling like we're always on, never turning off. Uh, the house workers and caregiving burden due to COVID-19 worry that their performance is being negatively judged because of caregiving responsibilities. Uh, that guilt comes along with, uh, you know, I can't make it to work today. I, you know, I have the kids at home. So there's a guilt, a certain guilt that comes with that, that holds us back. Discomfort, sharing the challenges they're facing with teammates or managers, feeling blindsided by decisions that affect their day-to-day -day work, uh, feeling unable to bring their whole self to work. When we're spread so thin, you know, what percentage are we actually giving when we're working, right? Uh, this is uh, how companies are supporting employees. And so this is important because, you know, a lot of companies have stepped up, you know, they, they, they are addressing that burnout. 
the anxiety that we have, what companies have communicated. Um, so childcare and homeschooling challenges um, at 88%, what companies have provided to employees um, started at 18%, now they're close to 46%. Um, so mental health and well-being, we talk about burnout. So um, this is this graph in particular is the percentage of companies who have communicated to employees um, versus the percentage of companies that have provided to or supported employees during COVID. Um, COVID-19 could push many mothers out of the workforce. And um, so with that being said, um, we'll kind of just take a little look into that for that one second. So, during COVID-19, childcare and housework have mostly fallen to the mothers. And a lot of the media has picked up on this and you've been hearing this a lot is that double shift. Um, you know, working all day, coming home, doing homework, feeding the kids, you know, that always on, you know, 76% of mothers with children under age 10 say childcare is one of their top three challenges during COVID-19 compared, uh, compared to 54% of fathers with young children. Um, mothers are three times more likely to be responsible for most of the household labor. More than 70% of fathers think they are splitting household labor equally with their partner during COVID-19, but only 44% of mothers say the same. Interesting. Um, I think we got a check. Okay. Um, so this, this little chart here, it's just analyzing, you know, the difference between how fathers are perceiving it versus mothers who are perceiving it. Um, on top of increased demands at home, mothers worry they'll be judged more harshly at work. Mothers are more likely than fathers to feel exhausted and to say that childcare and homeschooling are among their biggest challenges during the pandemic. One in three mothers may be forced to scale back or opt out. And, you know, I think I've talked about this um, in our last Inspire meeting. Um, I know for me in particular, we um, built the whole company based on working moms, um, moms that wanted to get back into the workforce. So, um, you know, that kind of backfired on us a little bit. You know, um, there's a lot of um, women that were working full time or, or part, even part time couldn't do anything, you know. Uh, companies are at risk of losing women in leadership. Um, and this goes in about senior level. Women are facing heightened pressure both at work and at home. Women are often held to a higher performance standard than men. They, be more, they may be more likely to blame, be blamed for failure. Senior level women are also nearly twice as likely as women overall to be onlys, the only or one of the only women in the room that work. Women are more likely than men at the same level to feel under pressure to work more and as though they have to be always on. They are one and a half times more likely than senior level men to think about downshifting their careers or leaving the workforce because of COVID-19. Almost three and four cite burnout as their main reason. Um, and you know the study goes on to say the most important thing companies can't afford to lose women leaders. The possibility of losing so many senior level women is alarming. Uh, if women leaders leave the workforce, women at all levels could lose their most powerful allies and, and champions. Um, and this graph, this is um, senior level women are much more likely than senior level men to practice allyship. Meaning, you have a corporation, you have a, a senior level woman. Uh, most likely going to promote, you know, women underneath up. So if you're losing those higher level women, um, then, um, sorry, then you're going to lose that promotion of, you know, it's, 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 it's that ladder, right? Of if you have that woman at the higher level, these lower level women are not going to be able to make, you know, strides in their careers. Um, so companies are at a critical crossroad. The choices companies make could shape the workplace for women for decades to come, for better or for worse. And millions of women are considering downshifting their careers or leaving the workforce. Millions of women um, back from being promoted to manager is still broken. Whoops, sorry. Uh, 
And so now we have that framework for action and the report goes on to say, you know, what can we do? Success will look different for different organizations, but two things are clear. Companies need to address the heightened challenges women are facing and they need to better support black women. And so then now we talk, the study goes into how can companies actually do this? Like, what, what do we do? How can, how can they address these challenges that women are facing? And so they come up with these uh, steps, step-by-step step, what corporations can do. So retain women most impacted by the challenges of COVID-19. Companies need to take steps to reduce the additional pressures they're experience, they experiencing. There's actually six of them. Um, here are the key six areas where companies should focus or expand their efforts. So number one, companies should make work more sustainable. Uh, a sustainable pace at work is essential to helping moms, senior level women, and all employees that are facing burnout. Um, to make this happen, leaders and managers need to look at productivity and performance expectations set before COVID and look at that to say, is it really realistic? Uh, where were we before this happened? Um, they may also need to reset goals, uh, narrow project scopes, or keep the same goals and extend deadlines. Um, and currently, only a number of managers are doing this in corporate America. Um, we've heard from companies that have offered COVID-19 days to give parents a chance to prepare for new school year, um, and from companies that close for a few Fridays each quarter to give, an every, to give everybody an opportunity to recharge. Uh, number two, reset norms around flexibility, um, drawing clear lines between work and home. And many employees feel like they're always on. So companies should look for ways to reestablish work-life boundaries. Um, for many, this may require setting new work, work norms, for example, establishing set hours for meetings, uh, putting policies, policies in place for responding to emails. And I know I'm guilty of this. Um, of responding to emails like at nine o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night. Well, that gives the perception that it's okay to do that, right? And then eventually people start expecting that from you. Um, so really setting those boundaries of, okay, nine to five or whatever it may be, seven to four, but really sticking to that. Um, given the shift to remote work and the heightened challenges employees are coping with in their personal lives, performance criteria set before COVID-19 may no longer be appropriate. Managers can relieve employee stress and refocus on key priorities by reassessing performance criteria. Um, so that's taking a look at performance reviews, which was number three. Uh, number four, take steps to minimize gender bias. What is that? The pandemic may be amplifying bias women, um, biases that women have faced for years, higher performance standards, harsher judgment for mistakes, and penalties for being mothers and for taking advantage of flex flexible work options. You know, these biases could show up in new ways during COVID-19. For example, when judgmental comments are made about young children, um, playing in the background on video calls, we've all had that happen to us. When coworkers assume, you know, consciously or unconsciously that women are less committed to their jobs. Um, or when managers are evaluating women in performance reviews, um, given managers and team members have less visibility into their colleagues' day-to-day -day work. Um, so how do you mitigate that? Um, how do you mitigate this bias in, the, in corporate America? Companies need to make sure that employees are aware of them. You know, so, so, you know subconsciously, you might, you know, somebody might not even realize it. So it really comes down to leaders and employees um, should publicly speak to potentially outs outsized impact of bias during COVID-19, maybe bias training can also help. Um, just one in four employees have participated in unconscious bias training. And even employees who have participated in the past would benefit from a refresher. So making sure that that's, a, that's an issue and communicating that to your team. Um, adjusting policies and programs to better support employees. Uh, I feel like this is one that, um, you know, a lot of companies, they didn't have an option to do this. Uh, many companies have extended policies and programs to support employees during COVID-19 from offering more paid time off. Um, and you know, the government has offered resources for employers to be able to do this. Um, companies should make sure employees are aware of the full range of benefits. Um, these benefits need to be communicated to employees. Um, companies should make sure employees are aware and what's available to them. And there's a significant gap between what companies offer and what 
employees are aware of. Um, for example, um, almost all companies offer mental health counseling, but only about half of employees know the benefit is available. The same trend holds for other valuable programs, parenting resources, health checks, and bereavement counseling. Uh, as organiz organizations settle into this new normal, they should determine how effectively they're addressing employees' biggest challenges and reallocating resources to the programs that are most valuable to these employees. And number six, strengthen employee communication. Open and frequent communication with employees is critical, um, especially in, in a crisis as we've had with COVID-19. When employees are surprised by decisions that impact their work, they are three times more likely to be unhappy in their job. Yet one in five employees have consistently felt uninformed or in the dark during COVID-19. Um, and this may suggest, the study goes on to say that companies should share more regular updates. You know, when everybody's working remote, we kind of feel like we're on an island by ourselves. So that corporate communication is critical. Um, it's also critical that leaders and HR teams communicate with empathy. Um, it's uh, with empathy. So employees feel valued and understood. Research shows that this kind of openness and understanding reduces anxiety and builds trust among employees. Uh, this is, I thought this was interesting too in the, in the actual study. It says not all employees are facing the same challenges during COVID-19. And I think this is one of the most important things that we can talk about. You know, not everybody has children at home. For example, employees who do not have young children who have a partner who is a full-time caregiver are likely having an easier time juggling work and home. And those who are financially secure may not be worried about layoffs and furloughs. Um, to get everyone through this crisis, employees who are under less strain need to invest in understanding the experiences of their colleagues uh, who are struggling more. This is especially true for senior leaders who can set a powerful example of practicing empathy and reaching out to offer support. I think that's one of the most important things. Not everybody is go we're all going through something, but it's not the same for anybody. Uh, so the road to progress, right? If companies can rise to the challenge, the COVID-19 crisis is put in high relief. We may be laying the foundation for a better workplace. Um, and then it went on, there are early signs that remote work can help uh, level the playing field. 93% of companies now say more jobs can be performed remotely. And 67% predict a significant share of their employees will regularly work remotely into the near future. There is no plan for, for, for these uh, employees to have to go back into the office. Uh, the building blocks of a more empathetic workplace may also be falling into place. So many companies have made employees' mental health and well-being a much higher priority in the face of this crisis. Uh, Pre-COVID, probably this was almost non-existent, but now this is becoming important. Uh, okay, so this is a pivotal moment. Um, and this is how the study ends. Companies have shown a growing commitment to gender diversity since the first year of the study in 2015. That commitment is more important than ever right now. If companies rise to the moment with bold action, they can protect hard won gains in gender diversity and lay the foundation for a better workplace long after COVID-19 is behind us. Um, and then I, I, I found this quote um, online and I read it and I kind of half laughed to myself, but it said, and we've all heard the quote, she believed she could, so she did. But this says, she believed she could and she almost did, but then a pandemic hit and someone asked her to do double the amount of work with the same amount of hours in the day. And someone else asked her to be the best version of herself while running on fumes. And she lost track of realistic expectations until she heard all the women talking realized she wasn't alone, poured another cup of coffee and decided her best was enough. So Marie, do you wanna join me here? Are you, hold on, let me ask. Unmute. Oh, here we there go. There you are. There I am. But I can't, um, my video. 
uh, how do I do my bit? So, okay, there we go. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Thank you. Kim, that was really, really interesting. I hope that everybody was uh, who was on with us, men, women, I know we have some men that are here with us too. So um, I, I have some questions and I'm sure that the, our guests have some questions too, but that was really, really interesting. Was there any little other morsel of information that you found? Because I know the study was like three times as the, the big. Study is actually 64 pages long. Um, it's, it's quite extensive. I tried to highlight it, most of it. But I think you touched on the main thing too, is that I think this is a conversation for men and women. Although Inspire is a women women's group, you know, uh, we usually attract more of a women um, dominant audience. Right. In order for this to not erase how far we have come, it becomes both, right? It becomes an issue for men and it becomes an issue for women. We're, we're you know, it's, it's, it's both sides are just as important in making sure that this doesn't go in a, in a bad direction. Well, absolutely. Um, especially in the area of burnout um, and, and some of the effects and challenges that COVID have, has presented like working remotely and um, you know shared responsibilities, whether you have children or not. Uh, do we have anybody in the audience here that has had experience with working remotely and children at home and homeschooling? We have a Q and A section here, so two participants raise their hand. Here, I have. Oh, somebody's going to raise. So I have a couple of hand hands raised here. Now I got to figure out who they are. Uh, eek. So can't oh. go. Can you see it? Okay. I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay. So. Maybe put your put your question. If you put your uh, whoever has your hand raised, if you put your question in the Q and A, I can pull it up. Okay. Pamela Patterson is asking. Uh, she says I have ten and twelve year old um, kids, and they're hybrid with school and running, and she's running an office. Oh. You have boys, uh, 10 and 12 year old boys, hybrid schooling and running an office. Ooh. So how's that working for you, Pamela? <laughs> help, help me. Uh, she send she help. says, help me. Yeah, send help. Um, they said that, so when talking specifically about mothers and having children home, um, mothers are also faced with, we're, we're faced with persistent bias in the workplace. There's a false perception that mothers can't be truly invested in both family and work. Meaning we can't we can't do both. But we, I, I don't know about you, but I can process fifty things at the same time. You know, um, we're just more apt to be able to do that. And when mothers take advantage of flexible work options, the perception is strengthened, even if they are just as productive as other employees. Now that family demands are front and center, and sometimes literally visible to coworkers over video conferencing, this bias is often intensified. So. Uh, let me, uh, we have a couple more comments and some questions. Bettina Cano Munoz, mm -hmm. am I saying that correctly? Uh, she says, I work at home for uh, a lot of the time. My son is a senior in high school. He is in hybrid schooling too with music lessons. It's, she says, it's an interesting experience. She says, I feel like an IT tech as well when they come up, I can imagine. And then Jennifer Neely says, uh, or are others taking care of oh, uh, disabled family members? She wants to know. Uh, there are lots of strains whether or not you're just a mom. How do you recommend the appropriate self-care? That's important. Any ideas here? And then I have some other questions. Go ahead, Kim. That's a great question. And that also leads to our next Inspire event, which is on mental health you know, it, it through, you know, with COVID, it's not just, you know, keeping ourselves sane, but also, I don't know if anybody has, has witnessed this in business, you know, I run a, a team of seven and, you know, we have about 150 businesses within Orange County. Um, people's tempers are hot right now. Um, it's a, it's a very uh, different time in navigating business, right. In relationships. And, and I feel like everybody has just hit their max capacity, right. So now in business, we're even having to shift how we deal with people, right? That's a, that's a huge issue right now. Um, so I think that 
you know, the mental health aspect of it is, I mean, I think it's, it's important. And the study does go on to say about companies and what they can do on a mental health capacity other than being able to offer things for employees, you know, um, maybe being more flexible and just checking out being open women, especially in the, in the study. And I know for me as well, um, it's hard for us to say, I need a break. I hit my max and we need to be willing to do that, to take a step back and be like, okay, like, this is not okay. I need to walk away, take a break. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make it mean we're weak. Um, but I think that those are important, you know, things to do. And I think that working for a company or running a company, having that, you know, as, as a, as a, as a, um, you know, a, a, a policy to be able to be okay with that, you know, um, so don't you think too, uh, Jennifer Neely here was asking about self-care, which you're answering, but don't you think it uh, has a little to do with women changing their behavior? I mean, let's set aside how women have been treated. We're still behind the times. For every 100 men, there's only 85 women that are being uh, you know, promoted and stuff like that. But what about us changing our behavior, not feeling like we have to be all things to all people, right. like you yeah. said? Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have another, let's see here. Um, but also having that shut off. I think that's, you know, we, with technology the way it is now, I feel like we never do shut off. And as soon as you hit that send button at 11 o'clock or, you know, you set that precedence that, hey, it's okay. And I'm going to answer you at all hours of the night. Um, I have clients that call me at all hours. And I think I made, you know, during COVID, we had a little bit, of, and this is where I think it got a little muddled. Because when everything shut down, a lot of us, you know, I know for my, me, for an example, I'm running a business, um, homeschooling three kids. So my hours of working were more in the evening of answering emails and taking calls. And, you know, now that things are kind of back up online, it's kind of hard to, to get clients and, and people to shift back to, hey, you know. Boundaries. Boundaries, yeah. yeah. So Dora, Debbie Voris says it's hitting the kids hard and uh, you have to set boundaries. Make it clear, I will get, oh yeah, I'll get back, but just what you're saying. So Debbie is saying the same thing. We had a question here from Gerald Tudio. She, we know Gerald, hi Gerald. Hi, Gerald. Uh, she says, I have a 13 year old son who is working online, meeting at home, my coworkers are all men uh, and they are working at the office, but I feel guilty not being able to work at the office. So I gave up my office since I don't use it anyway. Oh, guilt. Mm. Guilt is a big one, right? Carol, I, I agree with you. I remember working for a, a big valuation firm in uh, Rhode Island, Rhode Island. And I had, uh, when I had first had my, you know, my, my first was an infant and they had this work-life balance. Right. And so kid would be sick, can't take it to daycare, into daycare. So I'd have to be home. And I remember thinking being made to feel so guilty for not being there. So I mean, I think that's a hard companies really need to look at their policy. Like, are they holding true to what they say, what they're putting on paper? Is it, you know, that that guilt, I don't know that that'll ever go away, you know, especially working with all men. Um, as you said, Gerald. Uh, I know. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, Bettina Cano Munoz is also saying it is important to sit right next to my daughter to make sure that she focuses on her schoolwork. And that's probably why Gerald is at home too, working at home. And then the Jennifer Neely, who was talking about taking care of disabled family members. You know, again, how do you recommend the appropriate self care? She's asking. Well, that's a tough one, isn't it? That's hard. It is a tough one. And, this, and to be honest with you, the study does touch upon, it has a whole section on caring, you know, with disabilities. And, um, you know, I, I, I invite anyone, you can download the study. If anybody, I'll put my email up in the chat after if you want the entire study to read, but it does touch on that. It's not just kids. It's, you know, grandparents and parents and, you know, especially having children at home with disabilities is another whole issue. What's the source of the study? The study was done by the McKinsey and Company. It was done by McKinsey and Company together with Lean In. Um, for those of you that aren't uh, familiar with Lean In, but 
um, they, they put on a study every single year, but the 2020 study was done specifically for COVID-19. And the actual study is actually 63 pages long. And in the back um, two pages, it does source all of its, um, its references and notes. Yeah, part of the study was started uh, just uh, to learn about women in the workplace. Remember, it started in 2015, and then, but then the focus be became COVID and the challenges of COVID. So, and McKinsey and Company is a, a well-known international firm, uh, research firm. Do you uh, see, uh, Kim, do you see? Katina? Yeah. Do you think companies might allow moms to spread out their work hours throughout a 24 hour period instead of eight to five? My God, I think it's the best policy ever. I mean, I really do. And I think you'll see more com smaller companies maybe do it. I, it's hard to say, but to me, I mean, I don't care what time it, what time the work is done as long as it's done, right? Um, but unfortunately, when you're working in business, there are deadlines. There are companies that work, you know, eight to five. It depends on what kind of, I guess it's industry specific, right? If you're in the tech industry, or if you're not in anything consulting or working, you know, directly with people on a, on a you know, that's my two cents, but it doesn't really address that. Um, they did say that there would be, that, that in, in line with your question, Bettina, it does go on to say about, um, you know, how companies that did not have flexible hours and flexible work time and working from home, that a lot of companies, what they're finding now is that people are being, you know, they're still getting their work done, you know, without having people directly in the office. I think it, uh, Jennifer Neely, I think it's important that we don't give women more to do's and instead actionable items we can ask for or implement, right? Are you, are there recommendations around this? Um, what what is, I'm curious if Jennifer is a, you can answer um, line here, Jennifer, are you a business owner or a manager? Because, um, it's important that we don't give women more to do's. Well, we have to tell our superiors that for those that work for other people. The other thing this study touches upon too is, I mean, we're talking about business consultant. Make recommendation. Oh, business consultant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, you'll have to train your people. <laughs> Tina, you're right. Do you that's that's part of the problem? Do you risk your job by asking for more flexible hours and more remote than than in office work in the future? Um, yeah, I mean that's the thing that goes with that whole guilt thing, right? We're yeah. afraid, you know, because we, you know, I, I hate to always use men versus women, but you have a male that your counterpart that you guys are, you know, he's in the office from nine to five, no problem. You're asking for the flexible hours. I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, so Jennifer's asking, what should I tell them? I, I'm going to answer this. And Kim, as a business yeah. owner, both of us are business owners. So we can answer this too. I think back to the thing in the study about communication, how, what are the programs that are available uh, for women and men really too? And how do you communicate uh, and communicating those programs. I think that's key. Oh dear. Yeah. Anybody? Hello? Am I off? I can hear you. Okay. Something happened here. What is going on? Sorry. Um, that, you know, what you're saying too, we hear you, we see it. I think what, what, what they had said, um, the six key focus areas make work more sustainable. I think that goes back to, you know, what does that mean, making it more sustainable? Um, both leaders and managers need to look at productivity and performance expectations, right? Set before COVID and then making sure that are they realistic, right? And then they may also need to reset goals, right? Becoming more, more flexible, narrow project scope, keep the same goal, but extend the deadlines. Like these are types of little tweaks that we can do that, you know, help everybody. Only a small number of managers are doing this for the study. Um, what about programs, Kim? What do you think that businesses, what type of programs? Maybe mm -hmm. self-help or? Uh, 
I think it goes back to any programs that the, the study really focuses on mental health um, is huge, right? Yep. Because then you can focus on the mental health and burnout is gonna be a little bit less. By setting those boundaries, you're not gonna be as stressed, which will keep more women in the workforce, right? Those things that, those are the small things that we can do to mitigate women feeling the pressure that they have no choice but to leave. Um, Right. Yeah. Uh, no. Did you see in the study too that I, I'm not sure if it was in this abbreviated version, but there may be as many as two million women leaving mm -hmm. the workforce because of COVID and the strains of double duty, so to speak, home meaning home and and business. That's right. staggering. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything to be said about time management? Is that just too trite? Well, they do address that. I mean, the study does address that. Um, I encourage my people to explore mindful mind self. Who is this from? Oh, that's still from Jennifer. Jennifer. Everybody can see that in the chat box that Jennifer had posted for UCSD Center for Mindfulness. She posted a link. Yes. Um, and flexibility and time management, absolutely. Oh, panelists only can see that. No, I don't think so. Can we? I thought that was open to everybody. Okay. If you uh, are, well. Oh, attendees, good. Thank you, Jennifer. And no. attendees, that's right, okay. So um, let's see, we're about 45 minutes in here, I think almost. Do okay. you do you want to, um, anybody have any other questions about the study, about the larger study? Questions to Kim as a business owner and how she deals with her, her three children, by the way, you didn't say all that, but Kim has three children that have been homeschooled. Uh, and, wow. she, and she runs a business with eight employees or a hundred employees, what uh, many. Okay. Uh, the crisis, this was important too. This crisis also represents an opportunity if companies make significant investments in building a more flexible and empathetic empathetic workplace. And there are signs that this is starting to happen, the study says. Um, they can retain the employees most impacted by today's crisis and create more opportunities for women to succeed in the long run. Um, so, no other questions. We have no a quiet questions. Yeah. You know what it is? It's because we can't see people. I know. We engage. Do you, well, we still have, you know, almost 30 people on with us, though. Thank you for staying engaged. Any questions from the men? I'd be... Uh, we have anyone on here? I'd love to hear. Especially men, business, male business owners. I think Chris Delts is on. Let's pick on him. Let's pick on some men. Where are you? Okay, attendees. Let's see. We have... We have Chris. You're going to be quiet, Chris. Can you hear me? Uh, we have Gregory Day. I don't know you, but maybe somebody does. We have, and that's all I can identify. Yeah. The only does name, it, who? Pam asked, Pam Smith, does it speak to male opinions on the study? It does. It does. I mean, they, you know, they, it doesn't. It, Basically, what they did was they asked a bunch of women, you know, you know, within 600 companies about corporate culture. How do you manage? Um, but it doesn't really tell you. It addresses it, but not really in the study uh, of what men, you know, what their opinions are on that. Um, I wish it did because I think that would be another whole study <laughs> in and of itself. I do too. I mean, we can't, you know, honestly, we can't continue to um, look at every, uh, the hardships of women, the hardships that women go through without bringing the men into the conversation so that they know how to handle us. Don't you think? I mean, I got a, a few questions here for me. How do you manage homeschooling leading your team? 
Um, there are men picking up the ball of childcare too. Absolutely. And Debbie, um, that's exactly how I'm able to do it. Um, you know, I don't want to give them too much props, but we, my husband and I are a team. Like we couldn't, we, I couldn't do what I do. Um, if he didn't do what he did to help me and we help each other. Um, I did homeschool three kids, uh, September two went back my middle and my little, um, so 12 and eight almost eight are back in full-time, no problems. My oldest is at OSHA and he finally goes back after a year and two weeks of being off campus tomorrow. Um, and he's 14, so I didn't have to um, really be by his side and he's pretty self-sufficient, so that was okay. But during the hard piece of right in the middle of COVID, I was about to lose my mind, you know? And, and you know, when you put a six-year-old at the time she was six in front of Zoom and, you know, they can't do things on their own. So I, I really, um, you know, and my tax partner, Jessica is here and I can see her across the way, but she up until attack during tax season um, had two little ones right by her side. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 uh, it, it was definitely a challenging time. And I remember there's so many days where my little one, she was crying. She was like, I was the worst teacher in the world. And I'm sure Jessica will say the same thing. We're, we're trying to run a business where we're, you know, losing our patience with these kids because we're doing a job that we weren't meant to do. And at the end of the day, you kind of just have to, I just would look at her and say, I'm sorry, this isn't, you know, this isn't what mommy's, this isn't what I signed up to do and I'm doing a really crappy job, but she can read, so. <laughs> She's okay. <laughs> um, any specific action items men can do to help support women? I love you, Christelle. Yes, there is. There's so many things. And I think that, that should be, that's an important piece because I think women need to communicate more. We need, we're afraid to speak up for what it is that we need, right? right? We're afraid to ask for more time. We're afraid to ask for an extended deadline. We're afraid to say, hey, I can't make it there for that time because I have a school play. Like, I think that we need to be able to feel comfortable to speak up for what we need. And I think on that flip side, men in, in leadership positions, they need to take a step back and, 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 you know, not make women feel guilty, have that flexibility. Because I'm going to tell you right now, no offense to men, but my women, my women employees, they get stuff done. They do. And even my working moms that I built my business around, They'll come in for those five-hour shifts, and what they get done in those five-hour shifts, like it's incredible. So, can just you see up. the question from or, or comment? Yeah, just speak up and not feel bad. One hundred percent. We are the worst at advocating for ourselves, and I think that is so important that we need to put a hand up and say, "Hey, this isn't going to happen, right?" Or I need more time. Or, you know, I don't know. I think that I hope that answers your question. See what Kelly, can you see Kelly Grady? Mm. I work with men, with only men at my office and think we need to remember to ask. It's same theme here, ongoing yeah. theme. I hurt, but listen to this. I hurt my knee recently and live on a third floor with no elevator and stairs and stairs at work. I live, okay. I had to ask if I could work from home for a while and they finally said yes. Well, Oh my, uh, they don't observe. Not Chris Delfs, you're exempt. <laughs> Chris, Chris is awesome. Yeah, just speak up and not feel bad, Debbie. I think you nailed it. Don't be afraid to ask for what you need, right? If more of us ask, then it, we need to speak up. And the, mo the more we speak up, I feel like the more that it would become more normal and acceptable, right? Um, I think so. Definitely. Exactly. Make them make them part of the conversation, but definitely speak up and don't expect, don't expect that they'll notice that your knee is hurt. But also that, you know, running a team of seven, I think I've always had a very flexible ask. I, I run my, my business in a very flexible way, meaning we, we have, you want to take a day off, take a day off. We don't count vacation days. And I know that's not the norm. You're starting to see it a little bit more. Um, but when you give like that, you get so much more back, right? Because employees appreciate that. 
Yes, absolutely. You have to work hard because you have that. And I know my, I think my mom is still on here. My mom actually runs a Starbucks back east and she has that same mentality. And sometimes she's my go-to person um, and how to, how to deal with staff and, you know, realizing that everybody is human, and, you know. How many people does your mom have? I know you're on Eileen somewhere there. Probably hiding somewhere. My my mom runs a Starbucks with a bunch of students, so it's actually. Um, oh, that's even more difficult. How many? How many? Yeah, she's on here. She probably. Oh, I think she dropped off. But uh, Kelly Grady, we have to ask for what we need, and no one can make you feel guilty unless we let someone hard to believe but true. My dad is the one that taught me that. You have a good dad, Kelly. Yes, yeah, I think that's important too. Good. Um, you know the guilt. Right. Um, I'm trying to think. What's of up anything. our program now that we're we're kind of um, wrapping it up? Yeah. So I'm, was Pam? Pam uh, is gonna talk. I want everybody to stand next. Inspire. We'll, we'll I'll get Pam the date. Um, but it's gonna be um, uh, with Dr. Shannon Curry talking about relationships and mental health and dealing with me open. Can you say uh, something a little bit, Kim, about um, Dr. Curry? Uh, do you have a bio? I don't have it on me, but we'll, we'll okay. circulate it once Pam. Okay. Um, let's have Pam pop in, talk about Chamber, anything Chamber, any events that we have going on. Um, I know we have a lot of them, and we're we're back in full, trying to get back in full gear. Pam? You Pam, there? can you come on you, and unmute yourself? And I'm unmuted. I'm just trying to pull up my picture really quickly. Pull up your pretty face. Unmasked. Unmasked. Okay. See, it's, for some reason, it's not letting me pop up as a video. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and do you want me to uh, talk about the upcoming oh. events? Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it took a man. Master of IT. <laughs> So we do have some upcoming events that we'd love to have you all come to. There's actually several. Uh, March 18th, Thursday, we have our government affairs at 8 a.m. We'll be having the city manager, Grace Wang, uh, talk about the city updates, upcoming plans, the homelessness solutions, and, uh, and a lot more. March 25th is our economic up forecast update. With UCI, Chris Schwartz, he's an amazing speaker. You know, we always learn so much from him. It'll be at 11.30 a.m. It'll be on the latest thoughts on the economy and financial markets. So we'd love to have you join us then. April 1st is our Wake Up Newport at 8 a.m. We will be having Daniele, Daniele Strupa, I think I said that right, uh, with Chapman University, he heads up Chapman. We had him last year and I think the year before. He's a wonderful speaker as well. Tuesday, April 13th at 12 noon will be one of our educational uh, seminars and we'll be focusing on LinkedIn and their tool called Navigation. I have an expert talking about how you can utilize it uh, to get more leads, get more customers. Um, he actually uses it. He has a marketing company for his clients to get them leads. So um, it does cost to get this tool, but a lot of people um, don't know how to use it. And the cost, if you know how to use it, is well worth it. So we'll be doing that on the second Tuesday in April. And then on April 25th, 21st, pardon me, we have our networking luncheon, which we do every single month. Uh, everybody gets to meet each other. We go into different breakout rooms. So we'd love to have you join us there as well. And that's what we have so far up through the middle of April. Nice programs. It's very busy. If we have anybody online, um, we're losing people here, but if we have anybody online that isn't a member, how do they become a member, Pam? Well, I'd love to talk to you about that. Uh, you can reach me at 949-729-4411, or you can go to our website, which is very easy, newportbeach.com, and there, just look on join a member. You can look at all of the benefits that you can utilize, and we can talk about it, figure out which tier you want to be at. And the lineup that we have coming going forward is a really good taste of the variety of things that we provide. And um, on top of that, Steve Rosansky, our CEO, is putting out videos all the time on COVID in businesses right when it happens. So you, I'm sure you'll see them this afternoon on a video. Uh, but they've been very, very helpful to a lot of the businesses. Also, he is available to help you with the loans, the PPP loans, 
directly. Um, so anything, that's what we're here for is to help the local business people. So utilize us. Yes, and if you ever need to know what's going on as far as tears go, Steve is your guy. <laughs> he is. Tears, yeah. oh yes. And, and Kim, before we close, don't you, you help people with, with okay. PCP also, don't you? All right, so are we gonna end this? I mean, 12.56, that's not too bad. I, I encourage everybody, if you have any questions, reach out to me directly. Um, can I put it on that, my email? If you want a copy of the entire study, I'd be happy to share it with you. Um, can I put it? Hold on. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Oops. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, you want to close, Kim? Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned. We are back. We have a full lineup. Uh, hopefully pretty soon we can have a little happy hour, maybe something. In, to in person? In person? I think we're getting there. So. The minute we can, we will do it. The minute we can, we will do it. Yes. And um, thank you, everybody, for all your comments. And it seems like we're all, I mean, great comments, great I think that the biggest takeaway here is speak up, right? Raise your hand, say how you feel, set those boundaries. And most important, we all need to support each other. And I think a lot of businesses, just to add something, have learned how to cope with their workforce at home and have learned now how to set benchmarks that, okay, as long as you're hitting this, I'm okay with that. So it will. I think it will help boost the uh, flexibility of our yeah future work. I agree. Okay. Thank Good. you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Kim. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Okay.